Welcome back. You are now watching Talking Points. And now for our interview segment, it is the Raya month again, and we have just witnessed the end of Ramadan for this year. As usual, where there are food, there are trash. And most people aren't concerned about how much trash we have gathered aside. But fortunately this year, the Knights of our Garden, Eco Knights, have been working hard in educating our nation on how to safeguard our environment while getting food at the Bazaar Ramadan, giving society a chance to be a responsible community. To tell us more about their recent campaign, Back to Book Us, we have Emeril Redzwan, the campaign coordinator, as well as Nabila Shahimi, an education officer of Eco Nights. Hello, guys. How are you doing today? Uh, thank Hi. you. Thank Thanks you for, for joining us yeah. on here. Yeah. All right. So now, first and foremost, can you just tell us about yourself and how did you get involved into um, Eco Nights? Uh, okay. All right. My name is Emeril Redzwan, and and my background, uh, I'm actually a student study in UST Slango. I'm taking a Bachelor of Environmental Science. Mm -hmm. Uh, after, and then I graduated in 2016. Uh, during my after, during before I'm graduating, and I'm actually uh, working as an intern in here in Econites, uh, starting from the early 2016. Uh, and then after I'm graduating, uh, I was calling back to be part of uh, Econite teams. And I've been uh, since then I've been uh, becoming part of their team uh, for Econites. I see. Until this year, yeah. All right. So what about you, Nabila? What's your story? So um, I hail from Cheras, and I am actually a environmental biology graduate from mm -hmm. University of Science Malaysia. So like similar to Emiro, uh, I was an intern in Econites, and after um, I graduated. I was called back to Econix to work as an education officer. So my role is just basically um, doing all these education modules and helping out the team to uh, work with educational institutes, conducting workshops with community. Those are some of my work. Yes. I see. Um, so what is your passion when it comes to safeguarding our environment? Uh, for me, actually it's about uh, taking action because uh, that's the main reason I'm taking the environmental science as my, uh, as my study field. Because I see here in Malaysia, there's a lot of opportunities, and and without uh, without higher education about the, our environments, uh, it won't. We don't have a sustainable uh, environment here in Malaysia. So uh, I'm taking this opportunity to for myself to be part of the agent of change, especially okay. for the environment, and also to educating uh, all the uh, community around in Malaysia. Lah. So what about you, know, Bila? What's your point of view? So my passion, okay. Uh, I'm more attached to the community because uh, when I was working, when I started working with Econites, I'm more exposed to community and I see how important it is to have community working with us in order to achieve a similar goal. Mm -hmm. So working with different communities actually makes me happier, especially, and it gives me more encouragement when I see them participating. So that's what is it, level of action. Uh, participating and also like they when they learn something new and they apply in their life, you know, that sort of like encourage me to even push on in uh, f fighting for the environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So during the Ramadan period, um, you guys held the, had the hashtag back to book us. Yep. <laughs> so how was that? And did you guys get good response from the public? Uh, for now, uh, since we start, we back to book us campaign started on the 26th, 26th, uh, 26th of June. Mm -hmm. uh, and where where we're doing it, the campaign is at the Jalan uh, Raja Uda in Kampung Baru. Uh, since on the first day that we do the campaign, we receive a lot of interested uh, communities around the Kampung Baru. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever we uh, we we have our booth there, uh, and more, uh, initially we engage with them, mm -hmm. but sooner or later the people just are uh, interested and they come. Uh, what are you doing here? And they are interested to know more what what we are doing. Mm -hmm. So I would say that since on that day that uh, every day we have a quota that giving out uh, this kind of bag, uh, this bag and also the the, the food uh, container mm -hmm. uh, as an initiative for them. And since then that uh, almost every day that we reach our our quota of giving out the bags and the container lah. I see. And, yeah. How does this help um, teach pu the public, especially during the Ramadan, to be responsible communities? Uh, okay, for this, uh, what I believe is uh, people know that uh, certain action is needed to be carried out. They know that uh, our environment is not in a good shape. Mm -hmm. uh, even myself, uh, I'm being uh, other than uh, uh, doing the back to Bekas, I'm also coordinating the River of Life projects. Uh, 
where we doing where we aiming to improve the uh, is a gov sorry is a governmental initiative mm -hmm. uh, where we doing uh, uh, what we doing is try to get a public outreach program where we uh, also to improve the Sungai Kelang as a whole to improve the water quality uh, along that journey is uh, we also having a visit to the rivers itself uh, having a uh, we call it a boom trap sampling uh, where we see we, we try to measure how many rubbish that have been trapped in the boom uh, at the at the uh, at the sites lah. Mm -hmm. uh, during our vi visit is we saw a lot of plastic mm -hmm. uh, discovered from the uh, food wrapping packaging and so on and even sometimes there's a still uh, uh, kuah that have still in the package, uh, packaging, curry, curry, yeah, curry mm -hmm. and so on that have been thrown into the river. So uh, we actually from this, uh, from this what we see uh, in our what mean our from our experience, uh, we want we know that plastic have been uh, how to say very 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 familiar with uh, human life lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So uh, through this campaign that we're giving them the bags and we're giving them the Tupperware, we want them to, instead of uh, being accepting the uh, plastic, mm -hmm. we want them to have their own responsibility and instead of uh, asking for the plastic, they they're giving them the plastic that can be uh, filled with the, uh, all the foods uh, or the uh, mm -hmm. drinks and mm -hmm. so on. So basically reduce using plastic. Yeah, so uh, from there we can see that we're reducing the amount of uh, what demand from the yeah. demand from the customer to have a plastic uh, when they're shopping. Mm -hmm. So Amazing. yeah. <laughs> so do you guys also do like gotong royongs and stuff like that? Uh, we actually do. We do have a gotong royong. Uh, one of it is we did uh, recently in uh, in Taman Ikan Emas, mm -hmm. uh, located in Ceras, uh, where we working with uh, Starbucks Malaysia. Uh, and also uh, as part of under the River of Life project. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we having a Gotoroyong where the, this community have a, uh, some areas that uh, empty area uh, located uh, during the, uh, at the buffer zone of the rivers. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we do is we have a Gotoroyong there and also at the same time we try to establishing a garden uh, with the help of the uh, Starbucks volunteer and some of their uh, support and also from the uh, river of life. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we have the area clear and also uh, planted about like 40 trees, mm -hmm. uh, 40 plant uh, along, along, the, uh, along the river uh, for the community to start having their own edible garden. I see. Yeah. Beautiful. All right, so now, Nabila, we see on a daily basis videos, um, new coverage, and even from National Geographic about how bad our environment is going towards. Um, is awareness towards how damaging plastics can be enough? Well, from, um, from my opinion, uh, actually, there's, we, I mean, globally, we actually have an enough level of awareness. Mm -hmm. people, people know what, um, what plastic means. People know about um, zero waste lifestyle. Mm -hmm. However, it's the level of participation and action that is lacking. Mm -hmm. you know, um, if I go around and you know, talk to my non-environmental friends mm -hmm. and say, like, hey, you know, plastic is bad. You know, let's not use plastic. It's like, okay, yeah, yeah. Right, and it shows that they know about it, but they don't seem to be inclined towards take action. Yeah, to take action. Mm -hmm. So awareness, actually, we are already. I, I think we are really past that level. Maybe there are some places that still need awareness. Mm -hmm. However, we are now at the stage where we have to motivate and move together to mm -hmm. take action. Yeah. And that's the challenge that we are facing now. But it's an exciting challenge. <laughs> I yeah. can bet. I can bet. <laughs> mm, so, what was the motivation to creating this awareness campaign? Vision. I would say. You want to say? <laughs> okay, for this campaign, well, actually, it's um, again uh, from the boom trap that uh, M mentioned just now. You know, we saw a lot of plastic bags and everything. And um, Malaysia has already started a few years ago, you know, start banning, not to say ban plastic bags, but in, in certain states, they do ban plastic bags. And after that, you know, they thought about uh, segregation, waste segregation. So we felt that as NGOs who are also in the River of Life project, that we should also 
help to contribute and support. So maybe we do, we start with a small little baby step that is the easiest is say no to plastic bags. Mm -hmm. That's why we provided this uh, bag. This container is sort of like an advanced level for them, like, you know, tapau your food with this container, like back in our old, uh, our grandmother's times, yeah. uh, they usually use different carries and tapau. So that is sort of like our vision, we just make it simple first for the community. Yeah. Do you guys do that yourself? Like bring the Tupperwares and oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, especially during, uh, uh, before this, we, uh, of course, before the fasting month, usually sometimes when we go out to buy some food, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we take away. Yeah. We preferly to have this kind of uh, uh, method where we bring our Tupperware. Because one thing is first, uh, it's reduce a lot of waste, uh, mm -hmm. packaging and so on. So sometimes when we buy, uh, easy to say is the fast food uh, we buy a lot of uh, burgers maybe chicken they already have the kind of packaging so it's fill up our office uh, uh, our, our trash. office trash bin quite fast mm -hmm. and so that's it uh, for me uh, I'm just saying this as a lazy because after it's <laughs> after you finish you need to throw it oh, away yeah. so it, it's require a lot of uh, it takes your effort to do that but mm -hmm. if I bring my container I don't need to uh, throw it away. I just need to wash it, and maybe and tomorrow I can again. can use it again. So, yeah, it's actually for me personally, it's make my job easier. Actually, mm -hmm. <laughs> surprisingly, yeah. But even with that, bringing it around, you kind of spread awareness as well because yep, people will be true. like asking why you're doing that, right? True, yeah, true, that's what true. true. Yeah. <laughs> so now this campaign is more about preventing further damage to our environment. But mm -hmm. what about those that are already polluted? Um, is Econites doing anything for that? For already polluted one. Um, I think it's more of like a, okay, we can say that actually Sungai Klang and uh, maybe Sungai Krayung is um, at that point where there's, I mean, it's polluted, they are polluted. So the ongoing projects by River of Life conducted by M and his team is uh, like, like the Gotong Royongs, the Edible Gardens, um, as well as the River Boom Trap. They, we are also actively doing outreach programs to them, like giving workshops on uh, recycling. A workshop on using recycle your used cooking oil because cooking oil get thrown into the river actually mm -hmm. uh, with I mean with uh, without proper drainage system so it goes into the river so those are the things that we are currently doing as well uh, to combat I mean to tackle the places that are already polluted the rivers yeah. among our projects I think the river is very prominent yep. mm -hmm. other than those projects what are other upcoming projects do you guys have in line for this year and 2019 uh, okay, other than that is we having a secondary school finalist workshop. We call it the Anugrah Hijau, mm -hmm. uh, Anugrah Hijau finalist workshop. It's a year long comp uh, competition that we are targeting uh, secondary school. Uh, in this competition is what the school have to do is they have to tackle three main problems uh, about our environment. The first one is the solid waste. Mm -hmm. uh, the solid waste in here that I mean is a uh, human man-made uh, material, for example, like tins, uh, glasses, paper, that, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And the second one is the organic uh, organic waste, which is uh, comprised of the, for example, like garden waste or, or even the food waste. And the lastly is the used cooking oil. Mm -hmm. So these three, uh, these three components are being used as a part of the Anugrah Jau competition. So the school had to propose what kind of uh, management, waste management the school can do to tackle these three, prob uh, three main problems. Mm -hmm. So uh, right now we have eight schools uh, and the workshop, the finals, and this, this, all these eight schools have been selected to be part of the finalist workshop where uh, it's going to be held uh, at the end of this month. Uh, so what the school will be, uh, so during the workshop what the school will be having is they will learn for, uh, we have a mentors that expert industry uh, component and they will learn from them. So they learn and how to uh, improve their uh, proposed make, uh, management, waste management. And then after that, they're going to start applying at their school. Mm -hmm. So after that, uh, it's a competition. So uh, which one who doing the best practices, we win a grant, small grant. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, it's also a night of nature, uh, which, uh, where, we, where we're targeting a uh, um, Johor, uh, youth around Malaysia, uh, youth around Malaysia. Mm -hmm. and it's going to be held in Johor in August. Uh, so where we have this, uh, all this, uh, all this youth, being, being participating in our camp, we will teach them 
uh, also uh, almost similar like uh, anugerah hijau but is more serious thing they will be more on the on the field itself they will they will do some volunteering they will also uh, learn from the mentors and also they can uh, from there they can uh, spark spark their interest uh, especially about our environment is it going to be like a boot camp for environment ah uh, yeah <laughs> sort of <By> the ocean <laughs> yeah. sounds nice, nice. <laughs> yeah. um, so yeah. if anyone wants to volunteer how can they go about it well uh Actually, we are open to volunteers and they can actually email us on uh, info at econites.org.my mm -hmm. or they can actually email me straight away because I'm also in charge of the uh, volunteering session. So, uh, I, I, my email is nabila at econites.org.my. Mm -hmm. So, that's how they can contact us and they can actually arrange the volunteering sessions because some volunteering is more towards like uh, the uh, 30, I mean like the working out I mean the volunteering hours that they have to do for university mm -hmm. some of them just purely want to volunteer and they can just email me and I will actually help to delegate their tasks to uh, different projects and that depends on the availability of their the projects as well as the schedule mm -hmm. so another kind of volunteering is actually like a, let's say for a one-time event uh, volunteering and our biggest volunteering event is actually Kuala Lumpur Eco Film Festival that will be held in uh, October 22nd to 28th of October. So we usually get about 150 to 200 volunteers coming over. Nice. And they can be from anywhere, uh, whether they are students, uh, working adults, or families who just want to come and volunteer, they are welcome to do so. Because mm -hmm. they get to learn uh, all kinds of things, whether it's about environment or is it about uh, event management, there's all sorts of things that we can learn. I see. Yeah. All right, so before we end our interview, um, do you guys have any advice you would like to give um, before we go? Mm, okay, uh, <laughs> my advice is uh, actually uh, for my advice is actually I have been involved in the environmental field uh, for two years, almost three years. Uh, what things that I learned is that uh, action speak louder than word. Mm -hmm. So because we now we uh, we are actually the uh, information age where we can know about uh, certain things around the world just like a snap of fingers. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then uh, the thing is when we know about all this information what is going to be next is it you just know about it and then you just like a, some kind of like a conversation topics uh, when you meet someone new yeah. I think for me uh, if you want to make a change it needs something more than that mm -hmm. so for example that uh, I think there's a uh, two or three years ago there's a viral about a turtle that uh, stuck straw inside oh. the snow. Yeah. Oh. So, uh, yeah, it, it, for me, when I saw the video, uh, it, it's, it's, Sad. it's saddening and I can, I see the video that they try to pull the straw outside the nose, yeah. uh, outside the turtle nose, and then the turtle didn't make any sound, but you can hear the sound, the, the voice. Yeah. So I think that is like, a, uh, uh, I would say like a very emotional, and I think after that, uh, it's make us make people think that uh, our small action, for example, like we just using a straw, can also impact thing other other wildlife. Mm -hmm. So after that, uh, peop, uh, for example, like for me, I think after I know that kind of uh, things happen, I try to, I I still using straw, but try to limit the usage. Mm -hmm. So whenever when I try, uh, still still I I still practicing myself. Uh, to reduce uh, the straw usage and also some, uh, for example, like the plastic and so on. Mm -hmm. So I think that is more. Uh, I think as a uh, as a young nation, this is the thing that we need to do more instead mm -hmm. of just knowing it. Yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> All right. So now, Nabila, what about you? Any last words? Uh, well, my last word is probably. I mean, to um, the public who think that uh, saving the environment is like quite a. I mean, it is a challenge, but it's yeah. not. Uh, really, really difficult to the point where we pull ourselves away from that. Uh, in fact, people who think that we're tree huggers probably think that we're so we're like <laughs> really <laughs> radical, radical or something. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not actually. In fact, you know, um, if I were to meet some friends who are not familiar with all these environmental terms and uh, environmentalism, I would actually tell them to you know uh, just take it easy take baby steps and the first thing you can do is say tak nak to plastics that's all it's like really easy you get to reduce your stuff I mean, <laughs> we don't we don't really get to be 100% environmental friendly but we will be environmental friendlier so 
uh, accumulated. Uh, I mean, like collectively, all of us will be environmental friendly. So mm. it's really easy just sit down at the plastics there. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> true. True. Yes. Yeah. Mind over matter. True. Yeah. True. true. Exactly. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me on Talking Points. Thank you. Thank you. Sama Hari Raya. Sama Hari Raya. Hopefully we'll meet again soon. Yes. Of course. All right. Thank, thank you. you. And now we're taking a short commercial break, and we'll be right back after this. Thank you.